Welcome back to another episode of Laon Aerospace, my mini-series in which we unlock the entire tech tree in science mode. And this week the episode is going to be a little bit different because we're not actually going to be getting any science points. I asked you guys earlier in the week on Twitter what you wanted to see from this episode. And the most uh, popular response on that poll was the idea of setting up a relay network. So that's what we're going to do in today's episode. I'm going to be setting up a relay network in geostationary orbit around Kerbin, which is what I'm demonstrating here. A geostationary orbit, well I'm using that term, that's kind of the synonymous term with it, but the actual technical term is synchronous orbit because geostationary refers specifically to Earth. A synchronous orbit is where your orbital speed around a planet matches its rotational speed such that you will appear to be stationary above the planet. As I'm demonstrating here, although this probe I've just hyper edited here for the sake of demonstrating what synchronous orbit looks like, but that's what we're going to be trying to aim for. We'll also be establishing some satellites around the Moon and Minmus as well. We can't do stationary orbit around Mun because of its sphere of influence being too small, but we can do that for Minmus. So that's just a little brief summary of what we're going to be covering today's episode. And some of you may remember that I have in fact covered these topics before. I've done a tutorial before about how to establish a geostationary network around Kerbin, as well as a separate video talking about how to establish a network around Minmus and Mun. But I thought, hey, why not take this opportunity to squash those two videos together into one kind of nice presentation. And I've got, I've had a lot more subscribers since those videos, so there's a good chance that a lot of you might not have seen those videos. So this is like your first time being able to witness it. And you know, I do need to establish a relay network at some stage in this series, or at least in this save, so why not why not broadcast that? I, I was a bit tight for time this week with it being Easter. I'm back as as of like when you're watching this, if it, as it goes live, I'm back home. So I've only got I only had a couple of days at the beginning of the week to sort of get this video made ready for Saturday, which is why I couldn't really do anything much more ambitious than just the curbing system. Uh, so next week we'll probably go to Lathe or something, but I'm going to give it ahead of myself here. And so there it is. The satellite launcher Vanguard has been constructed. One of the biggest rockets of this, well, the biggest rocket of this space program so far which is kind of ironic given that it's uh, not even landing anywhere but here it is on the pad and we are launching it in three two one there we go now i'm actually using some of the new parts here i've got the new kind of f1 engines that are part of the making history expansion pack as well as those enormous new fuel tanks just for the initial ascent stage so i guess it's kind of like a saturn 5 recreation but not really at all but the bottom part looks a bit like a saturn 5 i guess but i can talk about what's on screen if you look at the top left you may have already noticed it i've added that little box that says orbit just has all the relevant information that you'll need to establish a geostationary orbital network Work and or just any network really. Now those stats come from uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux, which is the mod that I've been basically telling you to install for this entire series, so sorry if you're starting to find this annoying, but I cannot stress enough guys that you need this mod. If you are playing on console, um, I am sorry, but uh, I, I will talk about kind of how to do this on console or just without mods as we go through the video. Basically you can just pause it and you can see the statistics on screen and kind of copy use the apoapsis and periapsis points as well but it will be harder because you won't be able to see your orbital period unless you calculate it by hand if you're one of those mental people that likes doing maths. <laughs> yes, the most important number really for establishing not only just a synchronous orbit but any kind of satellite network is the orbital period number on that uh, box there. The orbital period, what that means is that's the amount of time it takes to complete one orbit. If you're making a ring of satellites they basically all need to be orbiting at the same pace as in, you know, it takes them all exactly the same amount of time to complete one orbit, because if that isn't the case, they'll end up catching up with each other and separating, and over time, it's going to mess It's going to mess up your network, basically. So having that orbital period uh, readout is a lifesaver when you're trying to establish a, a satellite network. So yeah, I didn't really talk too much about our ascent because there really wasn't anything special about it, although we're not going to be stopping uh, our engine burning at once our apoapsis reaches 100 kilometers or 70 kilometers or whatever kind of normal height you'd be circularizing at because of course we're not going to be circularizing at a normal altitude because we want to be circularizing at an altitude where we can start injecting our satellites into a kerbo synchronous orbit so we're going to be raising our apoapsis to 2,863,333.52 meters above sea level. I did actually overshoot on my initial ascent burn, well I wasn't too bothered because at this stage it's not that critical to get it dead on because we're not doing our final circularization and you know, as we modify the height of our periapsis while at apoapsis, uh, that's going to influence our apoapsis height and things anyway. So don't worry about being too accurate right off the bat, but eventually we'll be, we'll be aiming uh, to achieve a height 
of 2,863,333.52 meters. Why this number, you may ask? Well, I mean, you've probably figured it out, but that's the height of Kerbo synchronous orbit. However, we're not going to be circularizing just yet. You see, if we circularize, we'll be able to deploy all of our satellites in stationary orbit, but they'll all be clumped together. So we need to kind of separate them out so that they'll all be evenly spaced around the planet. And there's three of them. So we want them to be separated by 120 degrees and form a sort of equilateral triangle. So the way we do this is we get ourselves on an orbital period that's two thirds the orbital period that we'll be ending up with. So the orbital period for a synchronous orbit, as I said, is five hours, 59 minutes, 9.425 seconds. So we need to be getting ourselves on, a, on an orbit with a period uh, of two thirds that, which uh, if you calculate that ends up being three hours, 59 minutes, 26.283 seconds. I was very, very slightly off on the last three decimal places, but uh, I feel like I, I got it pretty close to be honest. And it doesn't really matter that much if you're not spot on. If you don't care about being all that precise, you can just aim for sort of an orbital period of six hours for the stationary orbit and four hours for the orbit in which you're going to be releasing the satellites. Once you've established this four hour orbit, every time we pass apoapsis, we deploy one satellite circularize it so it's on it's in a stationary orbit and then we'll switch back to the mothership swing it around launch our next satellite and that should and like with each pass of apoapsis if we release a satellite that will end up placing them all 120 degrees apart uh, kind of equally spread around the planet and as you can see we have started this process already so i have launched the first of our three big satellites to go around Kerbin. The Kerbin satellites are much, much bigger because they're using the biggest dishes so they can reach out to the furthest reaches of the solar system. ELU would still be a bit of a struggle, but other than that, they'll have a pretty good range. And we'll establish some more relays in deeper space around other planets to uh, help facilitate our coverage. The Mun and Minmus don't require as big a dish because they won't be transmitting as far. We're only going to be using them for getting things kind of off the surface of the Mun, and then we can use the bigger relays around Kerbin to you know, transmit things further. And in fact, the dishes I've got at the moment are definitely overkill, but they look pretty cool. I like the way those dishes look. And since this is a uh, science mode save, it doesn't really matter about the cost. So I thought I'd just uh, give a little bit of thought into the aesthetics. I will probably skip through a lot of this video because as I'm sure you can see, a lot, a lot of it is me just sort of fine tuning the burns, uh, warping around apoapsis and periapsis and playing around with the times. But essentially, if you just keep an eye on the readout on the left, I'm basically aiming for the magical orbital height of 2,863,333.52 meters with obviously our period of 5 hours, 59 minutes, 9.425 seconds. And that's a speed of 1,009.81 meters per second. I'm being pretty rough with it at first because we don't have that much time until we have to get ready to launch the next satellite. So I basically get as close as possible to what I need to be in as I can. And then I'll have to switch to the next satellite. And then once all three are kind of in the right position, uh, are in the right position approximately, then I can switch between them and get them all lined up properly. And here we are deploying satellite number two. And some of you may be wondering, why are you pointing retrograde here? And that's an excellent question. Why was I pointing retrograde here? I immediately realized my uh, my error and quickly flipped it around uh, to prograde. These things have got enormous SAS wheels, or at least enormous SAS wheels relative to their size. So they have incredibly agile, nimble handling, and they also have a stupid amount of delta V, really, for what they needed to have. Uh, ion engines have probably been the best thing to use, but eh, I just prefer the convenience of having a higher thrust to weight ratio in my rockets because it means the burns are faster. So yeah, I mean, it would be more. It would be better to have more precision in this sort of mission because we're having to do very, very fine-tuning maneuvers. Luckily, you may see me using throughout this video. I have a mod installed called Better Time Warp. Some of you may be familiar with this mod when it comes to increasing the amount you can do time warping, so you can get to Elu and Moho and places kind of at a reasonable pace. But you can actually use Better Time Warp to give yourself slower than normal physical time warp. So you can essentially set the engine. Uh, this is what I'm doing here. You can set the thrust limiter of your engine to be the lowest it can possibly go and then use physical time warp 0.1 percent so you can get very very precise uh, burns which you know is a godsend for this sort of mission in fact you can see on the mothership as well i have those monopropellant thrusters as well obviously i'm not doing any docking they're just there to kind of give me a little bit more precise control when it comes to doing very very fine uh, modifications to the orbital height and here we are deploying our third and final satellite for this sort of portion of the video in which we established the Kerbal Network. And as you can see from the brief glimpses you're getting of the map screen, you can see we've got that nice 
equilateral triangle thing that we want. Now, uh, I guess I don't really talk too much about the rest of this, as you can see. We've pretty much got it. Um, you can see ourselves, we're not moving relative to curve in surface now, so we've definitely established a stationary orbit. Pretty much, as you can see, the statistics on the orbital uh, window, they're not quite at the perfect level. So now it's just going to be a case of fine tuning, doing very, very small adjustments on the lowest thrust uh, of the engine. It's probably not that interesting to watch from a viewer standpoint, so I'll just cut ahead a little bit and show you the finished result. And there it is. So, like I said earlier, the apoapsis that we needed was 2863 333.52 meters. Our speed needed to be 1009.81 meters per second, with our orbital period being 5 hours 59 minutes, 9.425 seconds. And as you can see from the statistics on screen, we got it. And there's a little demonstration there of how we're not moving relative to the surface. Although you may have noticed Kerbin librating in the background. That's just because unfortunately I wasn't quite perfectly equatorial. Uh, so the planet will appear to oscillate slightly as you circular it. But we are still in a, technically a stationary orbit. So it's, it's fine. <laughs> so consider that the end of Act 1 of this uh, three-part series in fact it's like it is like a, a play i'm thinking of adapting this video for the stage actually i'm going to turn it into a musical so look forward to that in the future <laughs> and now we're getting on to the second part like i say we're going to be doing the mun and unlike minmus and kerbin uh, a theoretical synchronous orbit around the mun would be outside of its sphere of influence so unfortunately we can't achieve synchronous orbit but i mean that does make it easier for us because we don't, really, we don't really need to worry about getting our satellites at a very specific altitude we can just go for any old altitude and focus purely on our orbital period and just just like i said earlier having the same orbital period is the only thing you really need in order to ensure that the satellites aren't going to just drift away from each other because they're all orbiting at the same speed so they won't separate so in this case i went for a fairly arbitrary value for the apoapsis it doesn't really matter what specifically so i used a quick save first and then i used the cheat menu to set myself up in a perfectly circular orbit at the height i wanted took note of what the period was and everything like that then run that ran that through some calculations in order to work out what two-thirds of that would be and then applied that when it came to actually doing my uh, satellite insertion procedure <laughs> So the height I went with for our desired MUN relay network will be 870,081 metres, uh, which would be an orbital period of 1 day, 1 hour, 32 minutes, 11.243 seconds. Uh, yes, very arbitrary number. Uh, so we can crunch that down into its total time in seconds, 272.51.243, divide by 3 times by 2 to give us 2 thirds, and then convert that down to so the period we need for our mothership in order to insert our satellites in a triangular fashion again would be 5 hours and 2 minutes, 47.494 seconds. And here you can see me doing that now using a combination of reduced thrust, a normal engine, and then also using only one of the monopropellant engines. And I believe at some point I actually decreased the thrust of that to be the lowest possible percentage of its full power which just goes to show how little thrust you actually need for these very, very precise uh, tweaking maneuvers. So anyway, we just deployed a probe at periapsis. No real reason why we deployed it at periapsis, but wanted, I wanted to allow plenty of time for it to naturally drift away from the mothership without needing to actually apply any thrust from its engine and thus compromising its orbit. And there you can see it being deployed again. And I must emphasize once again that these satellites are very much overkill for their intended purpose. First of all, they don't need that additional communitron aerial. Uh, neither did the Kerbin satellites or indeed the Minmus ones that we're going to launch later on. They're just there for aesthetics. Um, uh, they really don't need a dish that powerful either. Like, this is all very, very overkill. I went heavily into the aesthetical appearance of these rather than just pure functionality because I want them to kind of look nice. Money is no object in this save file, so let's... Why not go, why not go crazy? It is important to have a lot of electricity for relays though. Not so much at Kerbin because solar panels work quite well, but particularly things like Joule networks and ELU networks. You want to have a lot of electric charge because when relays are in use, they eat through batteries. At least they did last time I checked. So it's always good to have lots and lots of battery power and R uh, RTGs are a useful thing to have. Maybe even fuel cells. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend them myself because of their finite uh, resources, but yeah, whatever. Maybe you could find a use for them. But I'm not going to discuss. I'm not going to spend too long on the procedure now because we're essentially going through the exact same steps we did for the Kerbin um, relay network setting up. So getting ourselves up to apoapsis, circularizing, uh, making sure our orbital uh, period is what we wanted, as was our orbital apoapsis and periapsis, just roughly. 
This time I'm really not aiming so much for precision in terms of actual altitude because we're not going to be going for a synchronous orbit so it's not too much of a problem, although that being said, I didn't exactly get a particularly good synchronous orbit around Kerbin because I wasn't equatorial, so unfortunately, equatorial? <laughs> equatorial, which means that we had that librating effect in the uh, of Kerbin when we look at it in time warp, but uh, whatever, let's brush, let us brush past that. <laughs> let's assume I got it right. Um, in this time, like I say, it's not as important that we get particularly precise because we're not going to be synchronous. So really the only thing I'm paying attention to now is our orbital period. So again, we're just going to get a rough circularization for the satellites in order to you know, get them space out, spaced out appropriately. But because we've only got a limited window before we need to launch the next satellite, we're only kind of doing it as close as we can get, and then we'll do it for reals, with a Z, once we've kind of, once all three are in orbit, then we'll go back and tweak their orbits in order to get their uh, orbital periods to be identical to each other. One thing to note as well, you may have no, you may have figured this out already from watching, but just in case you hadn't, I am deploying these things using decouplers, as in that's how they're attached to the mothership, uh, rather than docking ports, for example. Uh, make sure, if you're doing this, that you have the separation force set to zero. You basically, in the vehicle assembly building, you right-click it and just drag the slide all the way down to the bottom. It's not a huge problem, I guess, but if you don't do that, they'll be when they when they are decoupled they'll have a little bit of momentum applied to them and it would therefore change your orbit we kind of explore that problem a little bit in minmus because i don't know why i think the game thought part of the probe was clipped into the mothership body although i made sure that wasn't the case so i don't know why but either way when we detached it it kind of got flung away from the mothership which is good in a way i guess because it means that it's easier to deploy the satellites um, solar panels and communitron safely but at the same time, it meant that the orbit was slightly compromised, so we had to fix it using engine burns. Again, not a problem, because these things have an enormous amount of delta V. But, you know, if you want to do this better, then just make sure that uh, your decoupler percentage is set to zero. But yes, now you can just see me quickly flipping through all of the new satellites, making sure that their orbital periods are the same. In this case, one day, one hour, 32 minutes, 11.242 seconds. You can see some nice time warp, uh, physical time warp messes with it, so... I'm kind of going to get it as precise as I can, then just said I won't. I don't know if it's switching to the vessels that changes it, um, but it, it just seems to be, they just seem to change. Luckily, we're talking decimal points here. Generally, by and large, their orbital periods are the same. So I'm hoping this is just kind of a Kerbal Engineer error or something, but it will take a long time for these satellites to fall out of kind of a use, useful position. So I'm not too worried about it. But for the most part, by the end, we'd got it done. So they were all in the same orbital period. So I now I'm just going to never switch back to them and hope that that won't that will mean they never change. <laughs> Even though that's almost certainly not how it works. Um, this is just for my own peace of mind, really. I mean, what do I look like? Someone that knows about this game? Anyway, we've done the Mun and we've done Kerbin. Now we just need to do Minmus. And Minmus again is going to be a bit more of a precise affair, just like the just like the Kerbin, just like Kerbin was, because. Uh, we want to be getting into a synchronous orbit around Minmus. For no reason at all, actually. Um, maybe I should touch on this briefly. But some of you may have been wondering, what is what is the purpose of geostationary orbit? In real life, I'm talking about geostationary orbit now, so this would be Earth. Uh, in real life, uh, the direction antennas and dishes point is very important, obviously. Um, so it's good to have a geostationary orbit in real life, because what you can do is you can just stick a satellite up there, and you'll know it will always stay in the same position, so you never have to worry about which way it's facing or whereabouts it is. So satellite dishes on Earth are always just, they can always just point in the same direction, for example. It's just much easier to do it that way. In Kerbal Space Program, on the other hand, uh, direction, orientation doesn't, ma doesn't matter. Um, you know, dishes will always work no matter which way they're facing. So synchronous orbit is not really that important. You could argue that it's more important for my save in particular because I'm playing with the multiple ground stations disabled on Kerbin. So it's more important that there's always a satellite above the Kerbal Space Center. But you may have seen in this video I didn't aim for that at all because we're so high up above the surface that at least one of those satellites will always have Kerbin in its line of sight. So it's not that important. It's mainly for the style points. And the clicks, let's face it. <laughs> and the same would apply for Mimus as well. I mean, I think it would be a good idea. I, I did say this last time I did this kind of video back in 2016, that it would be a kind of a cool idea to build a Minmus surface base right below one of the stationary satellites. 
again for no reason whatsoever but it'd be kind of a neat concept that you know kerbals could come out of the base or whatever look up and just sort of see the satellite hovering there i mean it'd be quite a way up so they'd need a good pair of binoculars but i'm pretty sure kerbals are they are, they are renowned having very very high levels of visual acuity so i'm not concerned about that particular issue so just to indulge you on the mathematics behind establishing a stationary orbit around Mimus, you will need an apoapsis height of 357,947.72 meters with an orbital period of one day, five hours, 13 minutes and 20 seconds. And for, you know, the insertion orbit that the mothership needs to be in in order to get the satellite space up, uh, for three satellites, so as in 120 degrees apart from each other, we'll be aiming for an orbital period of one day, one hour, 28 minutes, 53.33 seconds. You can actually, I probably should have mentioned this earlier as well, just like the stationary thing, but uh, you can actually work all this, you can calculate this yourself like I did in Excel, and then I discovered during the process of me, I don't know how, it was just before I started editing this, I just stumbled across it as I was just double checking my facts before getting into this commentary, that there is actually a calculator online that does all this for you. So you essentially just type in the planet you want uh, for, uh, to put a stationary network around, type in the number of satellites you want as well. So not only will it tell you what apoapsis and periapsis and orbital period you need, well, I mean, you'll need the same apoapsis, apoapsis and periapsis would be the same, but uh, it tells you what orbital period you need as well. But it will also tell you what um, altitude you need for the mothership that, you know, kind of deploys them at its apoapsis. So if you wanted six satellites, for example, you'd need a different kind of altitude to the one I'm using now. And same if you had, you know, eight satellites or nine satellites or even 11 satellites if you're crazy like that. <laughs> but yes, uh, you may see me cutting through a lot of this because there's a lot of fine tuning around Mimus because of its small gravity. Uh, those engines, you know, have a much higher influence on their orbits than they would around Mun and Kerbin. So having to be very, do a lot of very, very precise burns in order to get our orbit perfect, getting our orbital period the same for all our satellites down to an accuracy of three decimal places it's quite hard to do so um so uh, it took me it took me a lot longer to achieve it than this video might imply because of the fact that i've cut out all the boring bits not to mention the fact that the vast majority of this video is played at times four speed uh, in post-production again just to, you know make it a slightly more tolerable to watch but as you can see we're coming up on the circularization of our third and final satellite around minmus and there's our triangle that we want, our equilateral triangle, so you can see we've got a nice separation. We can just play around now looking at that orbital period reading, just trying to get them to all be the same. I'm not too focused on the actual apoapsis and periapsis at this point, I'm just looking at getting the orbital period because, I mean, as you can see here, for all intents and purposes, even if we're not quite uh, synchronous, you can't really tell. And you, there was a very small light braiding effect again because we're not at a perfectly equatorial orbit around Minmus, but you can't really tell unless you're looking hard for it. Or if someone mentions it to you like I just did, so sorry if I... <laughs> Whoops. So they're still not quite perfectly aligned in terms of their orbital period, so at this point I spent a good five minutes or so switching between them all, getting the orbi orbital periods matched up, but I mean, you don't really need to see that. We can switch over to this thing. Because we need to deal with this. We can't have it left in orbit, just floating around, getting in the way and clogging up the tracking station. And as you can see, it is fitted with a probe core because we're going to... Uh, we're not going to land it like SpaceX because money is no object for my space program. We, you know, we, we are very... We're a very throwaway culture. We're just going to ditch it. Um, so why not, you know, destroy it in style? We'll do a very, very, very steep re-entry onto Kerbin to ensure that, uh, no, there are no survivors. And that is pretty much this mission wrapped up. And like I said at the beginning, this was chosen by my followers on Twitter in a poll. If you would like to get involved with the planning of future videos, which is something I just quite like to do a lot more of, is sort of polls and user-decided content, then you can follow me on Twitter. It is a link in the description. As well, of course, as a link to my Discord if you want to join the, the great community, as well as a link to my Patreon if you would like to support me that way. But on screen is a link to the full playlist, previous video, and one that was just chosen for you by YouTube's algorithm. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.